The first god I remember was a Santa Claus god, who you only turned to when you wanted something, who you tried to butter up and, and then got mad at if you didn't get what you wanted. <laughs> that didn't make sense. I knew if there was a god, he could see through us like we were made out of cellophane. Like he could look directly into our hearts, the way we look into an aquarium. Like he'd know what was floating around in there, like, like he might be the one feeding it. <laughs> then there were those people who, who tried to use God to threaten you, saying you better be careful, God's watching. Like God was a badass hillbilly, sitting in some cloud with a pair of binoculars and a bag of potato chips and a cotton candy beard and a six pack and a shotgun. <laughs> then I saw people who had Jesus' name on their bumper sticker, like he was running for president or something, and sometimes those people with Jesus on their bumper sticker would cut you off on the freeway and give you the finger. <laughs> Which is, is very different from lending a hand. <laughs> then there are those people on television dressed in weird clothes and scary makeup and used car salesman voice boxes saying they had the secret to God, like, like God was a keyhole and their eyeball was pressed to it and if I paid him some money they let me look. And then I could see God just hanging around his boxer shorts and a tank top and though I like the idea of spying on God, the whole thing seemed like something from the back of a comic book. And I couldn't help wondering if the world would be a healthier place if the Romans had just put up with Jesus and let him die of old age. <laughs> and then there were the football players who knelt down in front of everybody and prayed in the spotlight and thanked God like he was their best friend. But then they'd jump up and spike the ball and yell, I'm number one! And I'd be confused because if you're number one, then what number is God? And then, and then I saw politicians trotting God out on a leash like he was a racehorse. They wanted to hop on and ride to the finish line like God was going to lead them to victory. And if they lost, it would be God's fault. And then God would be the donkey they could stick all their problems on. And that was very nice of God to be both a racehorse and a donkey. And then there were those who said, you better be good on earth if you want to get into heaven. Like, like, like heaven was the United States and earth was Mexico and the angels were border patrol. Like, like when you die, you sit in a parked car on the outskirts of heaven, the engine idling your soul in the back seat in one of those kennels you used to call or carry small dogs on airplanes that you listen on the radio to all the people you ever wronged testifying against you. And, and then there was the church, which was like a cafeteria where they served God to you on these very ungodlike plates with these guys in black robes hanging around. But I wanted my God pure and not watered down by some human being. And, and so I had one of those catastrophe gods, the one you only turn to in an emergency. Like, like God's the National Guard you call in to, to clean up the earthquake of your life. And so I got drunk one night and drove home and passed out and woke behind the wheel going 60 straight at a brick wall. And I slammed on the brakes, my heart banging like a wrecking ball in my chest and I skidded out and stared at death's face in the bricks close enough to see we had the same cheekbones. So now I have a god who's like one of those mechanics who can fix anything. So when I want to chew somebody's head off like a saltwater taffy or amputate my DNA or open my wrists like windows that have been painted shut, I just put my soul into a box like a busted computer and, and haul it in and, and he never asks to see my paperwork or says my warranty has expired and, and I walk out feeling better and I don't care if he doesn't exist. <laughs>